Alright guys, I'm back with my WWE WrestleMania 30 review and I've got to say, from a WWE standpoint of things, I've got to say that the, the WrestleMania, last, WrestleMania last night was actually, it was a good show. I wouldn't say that it was in my top 5 or top 10 WrestleManias I've watched, but I enjoyed it. But for most, I enjoyed it, and obviously I'll talk about the other type of thing in a separate video. But I will talk about it at the end of this video as well. So we open up with we had a, well, let's talk about the pre-show first. We had um, Booker T, Lita, Renee Young, uh, Jerry Law, and, and HBK on the pre-show panel with Sam Roberts and Peter Rosenberg, and they were talking about WrestleMania. Down the first match tonight is Neville defending his Cruiserweight Championship against Austin Aries. This was a very good, um, fast-paced match. My only problem with this match was that the the crowd was very dead in this match. I don't know if it was because it, they were just feeling into the arena at this point or they weren't feeling this view. But in my opinion, this was such a good match to open up the pre-show. And in my opinion, I would love to see another match between these two guys in in the future. Maybe it's tonight on Raw or at the, uh, Raw's next pay-per-view, which is going to be Payback. Um, I thought it was a good show, and Austin Aries um, did a last chance study, but Neville got out of it. And then Neville um, really does work on Austin Aries' um, eye, because obviously Austin Aries had an eye injury recently. And uh, then uh, uh, Neville hits the, um, red arrow, the red arrow for the win, and, uh, and um, Neville is still your Cruiserweight Champion. I thought this was a good result here, in my opinion. Um, I think it was too predictable if he was going to give it to Austin Aries, like I said. I think it's a good booking decision to give it to Neville because I, I've been really digging Neville as a cruiserweight champion and him him and Austin Aries have been the two reasons why I actually still care about this division and, you know, without those two guys, I wouldn't even talk about it. So, you know, uh, uh, props to those two guys. Uh, then we had the Andre um, Giant Memorial Battle Royal and this was such a clusterfuck here because you thought that Braun Strowman was going to win, you thought that finally the WWE are going to finally, you know, elevate the Braun Strowman characters to bigger heights, but no, they eliminated him, I think, third in the match, and then, which doesn't make no sense, and then you have um, Killian Dane, who I thought they was going to build up as probably your next big star for Sanity, that guy, um, who was in WCPW uh, also, um, he gets eliminated, so it's down to Jinder Mahal and Mojo Rawley, and this... And then we get basically some interviews from a new uh, New England Patriots um, NFL player, or whatever. I didn't care about it. It's just some celebrity, pub, uh, some publicity, uh, uh, some publicity for the WWE. And um, in my opinion, Mojo Rawley won the Battle Royal. What does this do for the Mojo Rawley character? I mean, it's not really going to get elevate the guy to the main event scene of WWE. I mean, he's a entertaining character, but. That's about it. I with the whole thing with Mojo Rawley, I just don't see him I like, entertaining at all. And I, I mean, I get the kids like him, stay hype, whatever. But that was cool on NXT. But on the main roster, I just don't care for Mo, uh, Mojo Rawley. Like he was cool in hype bros, but I, I don't see him more than as a tag team wrestler. And I cannot take him seriously as a maybe if he, had, I don't know, maybe he could be IC Jeff. I don't know. But him winning the Andre uh, Giant Warrior Battle. It just doesn't make any sense, and to when you win that, when you're supposed to win that trophy, it's supposed to mean that you're going to get a big push in the year following, like obviously, Bra not Brad Strowman, um, Baron Corbin did in 2016. Not the fucking get, you know, not gives you jabronis like this, it just didn't make no sense anyway. But anyway, the first match tonight was AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon on the actual card, and I thought this was a really good, actually, for that, I better talk about Baron Corbin versus Dean Ambrose. Very good. This was a good match here. Um, Dean Ambrose retains. Bad booking decision there. Baron Corbin should have gone over. I don't know why they're keeping the time on Dean Ambrose. In my opinion, Dean Ambrose really needs a character change. It's been he has been kind of the same old character for a number of years now, and I would really like to see them tweak Dean Ambrose's character maybe as a heel and just do some different stuff because I see every time that I see a Dean Ambrose match or he's in a feud, it's always the same stuff. He'll come out with the crowd or he will. Do some crazy shit promo like Brian Pillman or some shit. I want to see something different from Dean Ambrose. And I don't know, maybe he should cut his hair or do stuff to really reinvent himself. I don't know what that would be, but hopefully he would reinvent himself. Uh, then we get to the actual match. It's the actual show. It's AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon. And this was a really good opener, guys. Um, you know what? AJ made Shane look like a million bucks out there. I mean, you know what? AJ got the best pro that, that's probably the best Shane McMahon match I've ever well that's probably like the best Shane match Shane McMahon match you're ever gonna see. 
that and the Kurt Angle match only 2001, but like in the PG era, this is the best Shane McMahon match he's ever had. Um, but yeah, he, you know, AJ and Shane was kicking ass. There's one point in the match where AJ tries to go for the coast to coast, but Shane gets him in a, in a Hell's Gate. I thought that was a good spot right there. And then Shane goes, and then uh, Shane gets a trash can and puts it on AJ's face, and then he does the coast to coast onto AJ like he did to Vince at WrestleMania 17. Good spot there. At the end of the match, basically, uh, Shane misses a 450 splash. Uh, and then AJ hits a Styles Clash and gets the win. AJ Styles beats Shane McMahon. Good booking decision here. It makes sense. I don't know. I mean, it would have been pointless to have um, AJ lose to Shane McMahon. To, I mean, they could have gone with, I guess, Shane and AJ again at Extreme Rules. What's the next year? Yeah, Backlash. So they have Backlash. Yeah, so I guess they could they could have done that again. But it, I guess they might have another match. I don't know. But these two guys have good chemistry together. I didn't think that these two guys would actually... I mean, I knew AJ Styles would have a good match with Shane, but I didn't think it would be this good. So, you know, props to AJ Styles for, you know, making Shane a million bucks out there. Then we had KO versus Chris Jericho for the US title. In my opinion, this was a good match. I would say it wasn't, like, it wasn't, it, it, it didn't touch Shane versus AJ. It was a good match for what it was, and I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, uh, Jericho gets KO into the walls of Jericho. KO then gets Jericho in the, in the walls of Jericho. They go back and forth switching moves, and then at the end, um, KO hits a power bomb on the apron and wins the match. And KO is your new United States champion. Um, again, another good decision here because Jericho's going on tour with Fozzie, and I see that maybe a payback. I think he's booked for payback, so after that, I think he's going away anyway. So, good booking decision here, and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this feud between KO and Jericho. Um, Next we have uh, the women's match. It was Charlotte versus Bailey versus Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks. And like I said in my preview video, I don't know why Nia Jax is in this match. She equals nothing, no relevancy or anything meaningful, meaningful in the this title match at all. She hasn't been even a factor in this title match at all. Only the only way, the only three women who's been actually relevant in this feud are Sasha, Bailey, and Charlotte. Nia Jax is like what? I, I mean, it doesn't matter how many times the WWE try to like build up the Nia Jax character, I can still not get invested into it because look what happened at Survivor Series, look what happened at Fastlane. I mean, are you trying to really trying to get me invested into the Nia Jax character if you're going to make a job out of it time? <coughs> this made no sense. But anyway, um, Bailey retained with a Macho Man elbow. That, you know, that gave me a good shout out there. Oh, yeah, dig it. So yeah, Macho Man, Randy Savage elbow for the win and Bailey retained it. Um, I was worried that I was going to maybe give it to um, Charlotte, but I see probably tonight on Raw that uh, probably Bailey is going to, maybe Sasha is going to attack Bailey some way, or they're going to work the Sasha Bailey feud some way. <coughs> so we can have Bailey versus Sasha at payback for the women's title, which I'm excited for because these two women had really good matches on NXT TakeOver a couple of years ago. And if they, if they have those kick ass matches like they did back then, like they do, like if they have now, then it'd be awesome. But yeah, it was a really good women's match. She enjoyed it. Now you just get to sit with a triple power bomb. She got eliminated first, and then Sasha, which I was kind of shocked. Why did Sasha get eliminated first? Oh, like second, I don't know why. And then Charlotte, like the orders of the match, like yes, now it was the right decision. Sasha ahead of Charlotte, and I, I know Vince is a big Charlotte fan. There's no hiding that. But why? Can Charlotte not lose and then Sasha and Bailey, and then you can build up this feud from Sasha and Bailey again? It just makes a lot of sense that way. I mean, I don't know. But anyway, it's a good match. I enjoyed it. Um, after that, we had the tag team titles match for Raw. We had um, the club versus Enzo Mori versus Shrimps and Zaro versus a mystery team. It was a fatal four, a ladder match, and the mystery team was the Hardy Boys. And I fucking marked up when the Hardy Boys came out. They came out, the crowd erupted, I fucking was like, fuck you, Hardys, and I was like, market, I mean, a kid and whatever, like, that was like, I've never been a big Hardy fan, but, like, me growing up in that attitude there and seeing the fucking Hardys in ladder matches, it just brings back memories for me, but yeah, it was a real good match, Jeff Hardy obviously jumps off shit because he's Jeff Hardy, and he does this one time off the ladder onto Cesaro, um, Matt Hardy does a twist of fate onto Carl Anderson off the ladder, off the ladder, then Matt Hardy retrieves the um, titles and Matt and Jeff Hardy are your new Raw Tag Team Champions. 
Um, I didn't see this head coming. I didn't think that they would go with this outcome. I thought they would maybe go Benzo and Kaz. But if it, you know, if a lot of people have been talking about it, like it's been the rumor, it's been the speculation, then I don't think that, you know, they would have pulled the trigger with it. They want to really swerve. It was kind of a swerve and they went with Hardys versus uh, the, the Hardys going for the titles. And I see maybe the Hardys maybe dropping the belts maybe to Enzo and Kaz at some, uh, definitely the Enzo and Kaz are going to get those belts at some point. I just don't, I don't think it's now, because the Hardys are in now, I just think they're going to wait till probably SummerSlam to get the moment. I know it's a bit unfair for Enzo and Kaz fans, but you know, um, Hardys probably drew, drew quite a bit of people in though. Um, and then after that we have, what was next? Oh yeah, then we had Triple, no we didn't have Triple H, what did we have next? Um, I'm trying to think what we had next, oh yeah, then we had the mixed tag match. Uh, Miz and Maurice uh, versus Jocelyn and Nikki Bella. Didn't care about the match, to be honest. Um, it was what it was. It was predictable. Cena and Nikki Bella went over. After the match, Jocelyn proposes to Nikki Bella. So finally, they're finally engaged, I guess. Good for them. And that was it. It was just so filler. Um, one part of this match I did like where you had um, the Miz got hit by a suit. Um, Nikki Bella hits a suicide dive on the Miz from the outside. That was, that was pretty cool there. Uh, but yeah, overall, it was a... It was just a filler match, I didn't care about it, but yeah, I'm uh, happy for Nikki and John that they're getting married, so congrats to those guys, and uh, yeah. After that, we had the women's match for the uh, SmackDown Women's title, so that's what it's to all the women on SmackDown. Um, Naomi wins with a chokehold, it was a bit, you know, it was a solid match, I won't say it was the best match, in, in my opinion. And glad it was actually removed from the pre-show, because at the start of the week, it was actually on the pre-show. And a lot of fans were pissed, and then it was moved to the main show, which was good anyway. <clears throat> and then after that, we had Triple H versus Seth Rollins in an unsection match. In my opinion, the second best match of the night. A lot of good back and forth here between these two guys. <clears throat> and then no Samoa Joe though. I think Samoa Joe didn't even make an appearance to help Triple H, which was kind of weird. And Joe was even not even Samoa Joe never had a WrestleMania match. I know I feel sorry for Joe, but anyway. Um, it was a good match, and in my opinion, they brought on the crowd. I mean, in my opinion, second best match of the night. Um, they brought on the crowd for a bit, then Triple H was a DDT. Basically, Triple H just works on Seth Rollins' his knee. And then, at the end of the match, Triple H tries to go for the... I think he tries to, like, knee Seth Rollins or something, but Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins push, like, super kicks Triple H into Stephanie, who's on the apron, and Stephanie goes through the table. So, hopefully, Stephanie is maybe kicked off TV that way, hopefully. And then um, after that, Seth Rollins hits a pedigree, gets to win, and he defeats Triple H. Um, I've heard rumors that they're going to do Triple H, not Triple H, Seth Rollins versus Samoa Joe at Payback. If that's true, then I could see that them doing that at maybe, they, they could start at, at Raw tonight, hopefully, and uh, yeah, that'd be probably a good match. Then we had Goldberg versus Lesnar. This was actually a lot better than the WrestleMania 20 match, a lot better than, than the Survivor Series match. <coughs> uh, Brock Lesnar dominated Goldberg with suplexes and then he did an F5. Goldberg kicked out, uh, Goldberg did a couple of Jack Cameron's and Spears, Lesnar kicked out and then Lesnar, uh, Lesnar hit another F5 and Lesnar is your new Universal Champion. Um, so yeah, I hope that... I, I don't know where they're going to go with Brock Lesnar now. I've heard that they're going to need Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns again at WrestleMania for the Universal title. I hope not. I hope it's just them in a singles match and not for the title this time. But who knows. Um, for the match, like I said, Goldberg and Lesnar, it was a short match like it should have been anyway. Um, then after that, what was next? I'm sure I'm missing the match. Oh yeah, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton uh, for the WWE title. This was a non good match I didn't care about. Bray Wyatt loses to Randy Orton, like, why, why is that, why, I know that this is supposed to be a retribution story for Randy Orton, and you're supposed to get people, like, this is supposed to get people behind Randy Orton, but, I don't know why, why did you put the title on him, WWE creating, why, to let him drop it two months later to Randy Orton, <sighs> I just, I don't know, on some of this booking like, on this show tonight, I just felt it was very, in my opinion, mind blowing to me because some of the decisions, this, uh, some of the decisions they went with tonight was like weird to me. Like, I don't know. 
it wasn't thought out. I think some of it wasn't, but whatever. Randy Orton hits the RKO for the win. So Randy Orton is a 14-time WWE Champion, which is um, scary because <clears throat> he's tied up now with Triple H as 14-time World Champion, which is weird and scary in his own right. But anyway, congrats on Randy Orton. After that, we had the main event, which was Roman Reigns vs. Undertaker. <clears throat> this was a no-hold-bars match. JR was on commentary. <coughs> in my opinion, this was a good match. Um, i got to say, though, um, this no whole bars match was actually good. You had, you know, Roman was an absolute heel, heel in this match. You know, he was uh, acting very heelish. He was, like, slamming on the on uh, Taker's um, abs, and he was, like, you know, hitting the chair on Taker's back. He was like, I'm going to retire your Roman Reigns, damn it. And then, um... After that, he hits like loads and loads and loads and loads of um, spears and Superman punches. And then finally, the last Superman punch takes out Taker. And Roman Reigns beats Taker. After the match, Taker takes all the ring attire off. Well, not all of it, but his hat, his cloak, and his gloves. And just leaves it on the ring, and that's it. Um, and the way they played this out tonight with Undertaker, the way that they played it out and how they had basically the announcer say, is this going to be Undertaker's last WrestleMania? And then he does that to close out the show. Makes me believe that this is the last that we'll see Undertaker. And it's kind of sad, but in my opinion, um, in my opinion, I want to say thank you, Undertaker. <coughs> I know I, I'm still recovering from cough. <coughs> but yeah, I want to say thank you to the Undertaker for having, like, really making my childhood like, really awesome. Like, watching you have some awesome feuds with guys like Kane and... Triple H and Shawn Michaels and Edge and all these other good feuds you've had in the past. I just like really enjoyed your. I've just really enjoyed your career and you're a true legend and first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. And uh, yeah, I just want to say that I want to say that now that that's it now for really for the answer that we've only got like Kane, Big Show, Jericho, Triple H, Goldberg left. From the attitude era, because Austin, oh yeah, Rock, Austin's retired, Ma Shawn Michaels is retired, Brett's retired, um, you know the NWO is mostly retired, apart from Hogan, yeah, Hogan I guess retired, and then you got, you know, Undertaker retired tonight, which is kind of a, a sad moment for me, you know, but uh, yeah, um, that means a lot of Undertaker fans. I guess, would they stay around and take a fast to maybe cheer for somebody else, or is that it? I see that, you know, I said, I said this once before <clears throat> with a friend of mine, that once you get rid of a Shawn Michaels, once that Shawn Michaels, Triple H and Undertaker retire, the last three guys in the attitude era, a lot of fans will leave. They, a lot of fans left with Shawn Michaels, a lot of fans are going to leave with Taker, <clears throat> and a lot of fans are going to leave with Triple H, even though it's going to be part of the company. But, you know, like I mean, it's going to be a sad time when those last few guys leave. And now we've lost another great legend in the business. Not lost in what, you know, like I mean, but we've lost a great, like he's retired. I mean, he's retired and we've lost a great immune performer that, you know, he's paid his way and now he knows he's age 52 now. He knows he's going to hang his boots up because Sting, he was another guy who retired last year as well. So, you know, I want to say um, thank you, Undertaker, for making me um, enjoy professional wrestling and uh, enjoy your matches, uh, especially the second part of your career anyway. <clears throat> you know, your parts with, like, you know, you know, second part of Undertaker's career was legendary. You think about the matches he had with, you know, Shawn Michaels and Edge, and he had a good match with Batista and Kurt Angle and um, CM Punk, and who else did he face? Um, he was 31. Oh, yeah, it was Bray Wyatt. And then he had a good match last year with Shane. He even got a good match out of Shane. So, in my opinion, Thank you, Undertaker. That is my WWE WrestleMania 33 review. I'll be back tonight for my Raw review, and I'll check you later.